To get started with Illustrator, you will use the Create New, and then in the New Document dialog box, you have a choice of what your intent is. Do you intend to have it in print, web, mobile, etc.? So we're going to say we have an intent to print, and we're going to select Letter and hit Create. The cool thing about Illustrator is if you're familiar with InDesign, a lot of those keyboard shortcuts, a lot of the ways you work in Illustrator is very similar to InDesign. So the first thing that you should do when you get in is kind of familiarize yourself with the workspace. And I'm just going to point out how you can reset your workspace. So I go up here, I'm going to reset Essentials, and that kind of cleans up my panels, my toolbar. And then if I want to expand that back out, I can click that double arrow and expand panels. Have a nice view of all of the panels I have here in Illustrator. So today we're going to just look specifically at how you can use Illustrator's built-in tools to create simple charts and graphs. To do that, we're going to start by going to Object, Graph, and Type. Look at this as kind of telling Illustrator what type of chart you want to make, how you want that to look. So we're going to start out with a simple pie chart. So I've selected that for my graph options. Do I want to add a drop shadow, include the legend? How, what type of things do I want to have for style? So I'm going to say yes, I want to add a legend. I can pick what type of legend and what my position is going to be. So I'm going to hit OK. And so now at that point all I've done is set up what type of chart. I haven't drawn anything, I've just let Illustrator know what my intent is. So I'm going to come over to my toolbar and there's my pie graph tool. And you can see there's all the other tools I have available. Two ways I can actually draw this. I can freehand draw the chart that I want and it goes ahead and brings up my spreadsheet while, where I will enter my data, or if I have a specific size in mind, I can click down once and then enter that size. So let's say we want this to be 4 inches by 4 inches. And notice I'm just entering IN for my shortcut, and it's translating it into points. I'm going to hit OK. So then I get my same dialog box. So we're going to go ahead and enter some data. So let's say we have apples, oranges, peaches. And we'll say we have 30, 40, and 30. Okay, so I've entered some data. I can also import that in from an Excel spreadsheet if I already have that spreadsheet. If I hit check, that's going to show my chart, give me a little preview. Now here's a little quick tip. Let's say that you accidentally entered on the wrong axis. Well, when you hit your check mark, it's going to look like that. And you're going to know, hmm, that's not really the look I wanted to have for this. We're going to go ahead and transpose those back because this is the type of look that I wanted to have. And then we can close that dialog box. Notice the default is for a black and white shades of gray design. Well, I can come in and I am on my direct selection tool, which is the white arrow, and I'm going to shift and click the oranges section, go into my swatches, select the orange color, shift and click my peaches, and we will make peaches this pink color, and then shift and click for apples and make that red. So I use some default swatches here, but if you want more swatches, remember you can open up Swatch Library and see all kinds of different swatches. In fact, we can go into our, this is the foods swatches. And you can see we have a fruit section that we could choose from right there. Apply them the same way we'd apply our swatches. So that's a very basic look at how you get started. Would work the same if I were doing a bar graph as, as the pie chart. Let's talk about if I wanted to 
change some of the settings here and maybe update my information. So I'm going to select my graph, go to Object, Graph, and Data. So here I can go in and re-enter my values and update those. So I can always get back to my spreadsheet to update or change my values. Okay, so let's look at some of the other options you can have with these charts. So I'm going to create a new type of graph. I'm going to go to Type. Let's say this time I want to do a column. My value axis is going to be along my left side. Here I'm going to drop down and look at what that value axis is going to look like. This is where I can set where my minimum and maximum values are. So let's say I had people rate gyms in town and I had them rate on 1 to 5. Well then I'm going to want to set my minimum to 1 and my max to 5. And for divisions I'm going to put that at 4. We'll see what that looks like. I'm going to hit OK. So again all we've done is set up here's how we want that graph to look. I'm going to draw that out. So we're going to enter some they got a 3.5. Okay, let's see what that looks like. So you can see there's our divisions. We have all of the divisions. These are those tick marks so we can change those if we want to. And we started out as 1 as opposed to 0 because we didn't give people the option of choosing 0. So 1 would be the lowest ranking you could get. So let's go back in and let's make some changes just to see what these look like live. So we're going to change our tick marks to full width and we'll choose that for both of them. And hit OK. And so you can see that drags the full width of the column. So we'll change that back to short. I, I prefer short. And let's change our division. So instead of four divisions, let's have eight divisions. And we'll go into our category and change that back to short. Hit OK. So now with eight divisions, we have an even clearer idea of how that's going to look. So we've basically divided at the halfway point. You can more accurately see where things are falling. The cool thing about these Illustrator charts, if I wanted to take this right now, I could just copy and paste it directly into InDesign to continue any design work I have.